I have been back to, to Ireland after 50 years. I was uh, as a student uh, attending uh, Trinity College uh, in the 60s. Uh, and the first thing uh, I feel is how much uh, this country has changed. The same way that may happen to you if you go back after 20 years uh, to Spain, you will see how uh, the country has improved, has changed in, in the positive way. And I think this is uh, the case of Ireland too. Um, what I have been doing in the, for the last three years uh, is trying to improve and to promote uh, the improvement of the image of Spain abroad. When I started my job, I was uh, appointed by, by the Prime Minister to to do this job, try to to make uh, some improvement in the image of Spain. The image of Spain at that time was suffering, suffering basically because of economic uh, uh, unbalances. And although the image is something broader than the economy, when we are in the middle of a crisis, uh, the economy has uh, such a big influence that the whole image of the country suffers. Uh, we had uh, one of, uh, of the strongest uh, crises Spain had, only comparable to something in the 16th century, at the beginning of the 19th century during the Napoleon Wars, and even bigger than, than the big uh, uh, crisis of, uh, of, 19, of the 20s, uh, which Spain didn't suffer so much. In this case, it was uh, a terrible a terrible drop of, uh, of our economy, both in terms of, of GDP, uh, a big uh, uh, deficit in our public accounts, uh, uh, almost everything was, uh, was in trouble. And we were a candidate, uh, we were the next candidate after Greece, Portugal, Ireland, we were the next candidate for a bailout. And, and that was uh, clear in all that was published in, in the summer of 2012 when, when I was appointed to the most uh, fascinating job uh, I had in my life. I, and I had some fascinating jobs before. I was the CEO of Iberia, an airline, and to be the CEO of an airline is a very fascinating job. I joined the company with my black hair and I came out uh, after three years with white hair. So you, you can find the the, the kind of challenge that is uh, to run a, an airline. I was uh, in other jobs, uh, but this was, uh, was uh, really a, a very interesting one. Um, so the, the first thing we had to do was to see how we could recover confidence. Because in, in a process uh, like that, the first thing you lose is confidence. And when you don't have confidence, it's very difficult to to be present in the international markets, uh, to get uh, money uh, from others, to uh, attract uh, investors uh, to a country which requires uh, capital. So that, that was the, the, main, the main target, how to get back to, to confidence. And the only way we found was uh, trying to present the case of Spain through the last uh, 40 years and, and say, how did Spain behave uh, with some of the big challenges that had to, uh, to encounter in, in, in the recent past. The first uh, was to join EEC. Uh, so we joined in, in 1986, and many countries had many doubts uh, about uh, the possibility of Spain within the EEC, bringing down all the tariffs, uh, allowing products uh, from all the most advanced countries in Europe to come to our market, which had been a very protected market uh, for many years. And we, we were able, through work and effort, not only to, to be a, a reasonable partner uh, within the EEC, uh, the European Union uh, at that time, but also to take a big advantage of, uh, of joining the EEC in terms of opening our companies uh, to foreign markets, 
to get funds uh, from European Union to do uh, very important investment in our infrastructure to improve our roads, to improve our railroads, uh, to improve our ports, our airports, and build up a, a very modern infrastructure that we have today uh, with some help and support from these funds uh, from Europe. So that was the first, uh, the first challenge uh, for Spain, and, and, and we fulfilled it. The second one was uh, to be part of the Euro. To be part of the Euro, as you may remember, uh, the Treaty of Maastricht uh, established uh, a number of uh, conditions that the country had to, uh, to fulfill in order to be a member from the beginning of the, of the Euro. And we fulfilled that in, in a rather short period of time. And not only we fulfilled, but we were able to work uh, with this uh, new currency and also again to take advantage uh, of that. We are a very pro-European country. We believe in the advantages of being a member of the European Union. The, and this is the public opinion in, in Spain, both in academia and, and, and by normal people, who uh, at levels of 70% support uh, the integration in Europe and the the evaluation they make of this uh, uh, almost 30 years so we have been a member. So we had a, a, a recent record of uh, being confronted to challenges and being able to uh, overcome them and, and, and be a member of those uh, challenging clubs to which we wanted to belong. So that was uh, the, the first uh, idea was to say we are going to do reforms, we are doing important reforms to bring to balance our public accounts, to increase our productivity in our uh, industry, in our uh, productive uh, sectors, and we will be making sure that this would be a plan accepted by the European Union with a calendar and reaching the different uh, uh, targets uh, on time. So after uh, we start uh, uh, to do these uh, reforms, we started to see also with the support of, uh, of Mr. Draghi, who had been very important in, in this process, with the support of the European Central Bank, saying that the Central Bank would uh, fight for uh, the, the euro and would defend uh, all the members in, in, the, in that process, we started to see signs uh, of recovery, signs of uh, reducing the deficit, cutting the public spending, improving our public accounts, and then the confidence was little by little coming back, and we start to see uh, some uh, clear results of the acceptance of what Spain was doing. To give you an idea, we, we follow a number of metrics to see how the image of the country uh, uh, moves forward. One of them is an uh, is, uh, index that we make uh, with the 30, 33 leading investment banks. The opinion of the 30 leading investment banks, which are half of them are American, the other half is English, uh, French, uh, German, one Japanese, and somebody, uh, and one Italian. Those banks, as you know, they make uh, uh, regular reports on, on countries, and maybe 50 pages, 100 pages, but at the end, in the front page, they have on the top right of, of the report, space for a word. And the word could be one of those three. Buy, hold, or sell, meaning the recommendation of those uh, banks to investors, investors who are the clients of the banks, could be companies, funds, individuals, and and this uh, word for, for us is uh, what was uh, uh, the most important thing. So by the end of 2012, out of those 30 uh, reports uh, from uh, investment, leading investment banks, we had 25 saying for Spain, sell, 
So if you have an investment, try to get rid of it. 4% were saying hold, wait and see what, what happens. And 1%, I mean one of them, was saying buy, one who, who was uh, an exception. By, year, by last year's end, uh, so in, uh, in, in two, uh, December uh, 2014, published uh, along the, the spring of, uh, of, uh, of this year, we had totally inverted that position. And we have uh, last uh, results were 26 uh, saying buy, two saying hold, and two saying sell. So we completely change uh, the, this uh, uh, opinion, which is a key opinion when you go into international markets looking for finance or when you are looking for foreign investment uh, coming to Spain. This has been, I, I haven't made the same exercise with Ireland, but as, as you were saying, the parallel is, is, is quite, uh, uh, quite impressive both in, in the years of prosperity, in which uh, you were called the Celtic Tiger, and we were called the Continental Tiger. So we, it was possible to have two tigers uh, at the zoo uh, simultaneously, one in the continent, the other one uh, in the island. And, and uh, from those years in which uh, we were uh, subject of admiration by others, to the gray years uh, or black years uh, that came uh, uh, from 2008 uh, and to the reaction that both countries had, uh, had made. Uh, I have to say that <coughs> Ireland was first. Was, uh, first we were a little later in, because of political change required to, to go into some of these uh, measures and these reforms. And as a consequence, uh, both countries coming out of, uh, of that deep uh, swimming pool quite fast. Discussion uh, in the academic world was uh, whether once we were down in the swimming pool we would be walking or we would be coming uh, up. And, and I think both countries have surprised uh, most of, uh, of international communities having a, a high speed uh, uh, way uh, weighing out. And this year, uh, 2015, is a reality that Ireland would be growing at uh, levels of 4% in GDP, and Spain would be with levels a little below, but uh, between 3.3 and 3.6 uh, by the end of the year. Coming in, in, in very rapidly as a consequence of the reforms, and both countries convinced that uh, we still have uh, reforms, pending reforms, things that we have to continue doing if we don't want to, to lose this uh, momentum and this rhythm and we want to, to keep uh, making our economies uh, more competitive. Uh, this is something that I think we all have in mind, that uh, we will have to ask, in our case, the new government coming out of the polls in in two months, and in Ireland a little later, the new government, to uh, continue to do the, the right things. And I think it's, uh, it's very rewarding uh, to read uh, the reports that are made by public institutions like uh, IMF or, or the European Union or, or OCD. And the last uh, one published was uh, the quarterly, the third quarter report of the uh, European Union, in which they mention both countries, Ireland and Spain, as uh, a good example of uh, how reforms uh, produce uh, good results and make, uh, and make uh, uh, a country to, to come out of, of the crisis uh, in a rather uh, quick uh, rhythm, and recommending other countries which are uh, more lazy, which are not uh, acting the same way to follow the example of Ireland uh, or, or Spain. Um, as you can imagine, my job of, uh, of trying to sell Spain has become uh, much more uh, rewarding and much easier 
than three years ago. Three years ago, I, I was talking to investors, to journalists, to uh, people who create opinion, and it was a, a fierce uh, uh, discussion in which uh, normally, as one of them told me, it could be true, but uh, you are in front of a, of a red light, you know, and when, when you have a red light in traffic, you have to stop there and you cannot move. One year later, I was talking to the same person and he said, well, now you are in orange, orange uh, light. That means, uh, well, uh, you, you should be prudent, but maybe you could cross if you look uh, to the left and to the right and no one comes and you could cut. But, uh, and then uh, a few months ago, in, in, in March, I think uh, I saw him again and said, well, finally you, are, you have the green light. So you are... Uh, you are a country that we can recommend to, to our uh, people, to our customers, to our investors. This is uh, a little bit the, the process uh, we have followed. And now, of course, we have a, a big challenge ahead of us, uh, is uh, the general elections. What is going to happen in Spain in political terms and how determined could be the new government to follow in the same path or have temptations to go into another direction. First thing I would like to, to say is that, uh, as uh, normally happens, two months ago is, uh, is yet uh, quite difficult to make a, a, a bet on what is going to happen. It's too, too difficult to be called, as the, as the Americans say. It's, uh, it's a little too far away. Uh, although it's only two months, uh, but to find out uh, what uh, really happens. Second thing uh, I would like to say is that in economic terms, uh, there would be little choice. There would be no room for uh, other things than the kind of policy that we have committed with the European Union and that we have been following uh, in the last three years. So there is no too much room for, for crazy ideas, for coming back. Uh, uh, it, it would not be, just would not be possible. And, and I guess for Ireland would be exactly the same thing. We are, thanks God, we are more and more linked to, to other countries. We are more committed to international uh, goals, to common goals. And those goals have to be pursued and achieved independently if you have a government from the left, a government to the right. I think the bad news for the politicians is that they have less and less room for interference. They have more and more commitments that they have to, to fulfill. And so there is no as much room as it used to be maybe 20 years ago for doing things in the wrong or in the right uh, direction. There is a, a narrow a narrow avenue through which you can move a little bit to the left or to the right, but this avenue, this uh, path, is something you, you cannot go in, in the wrong direction. Although some uh, people, some citizens feel that uh, this could be the case, that uh, could be uh, the risk that someone from a radical position could modify. Unfortunately, or, or on the contrary, very fortunately, the, the, the room uh, for those uh, is, is limited. What do you expect or what could happen in Spain? In Spain is going to happen something that uh, is different from what has been the case in political terms for the last uh, 35 years. <coughs> During that period, after the death of Franco and the, uh, and the arrival of the monarchy and democracy, we have been governed uh, during all those years by uh, a party, a dominant party, which was one of the two options, one the Socialist Party and the other one the Popular Party, which is the centre-right, being the Socialist, the centre-left uh, uh, party. So most of the Spaniards have been voting centre, centre-right or centre-left uh, through that uh, period of time. And in some cases, uh, the winning party was able to have a majority in parliament and needed no, no alliances, like today. Today we have a government who has had the, 
the majority in parliament, so has been governing by, by themselves. In the past, it happens with the, with the socialists. And now, for the first time, there is a common conviction that no one of the two big parties would have a majority comfortable enough to be uh, governing uh, with uh, support uh, from the parliament. So they will have to, to get into some kind of alliance. And the alliance could be one between the two big parties, make a Grossen coalition like in the German model. This is something that we never had in, in, in Spain. We never tried that, uh, that alternative of a big coalition of the two big parties. And otherwise would be a coalition of one of the two big parties with two emerging parties, two emerging parties that have uh, appear in the political scene uh, very recently. They don't have, uh, uh, one of them is only uh, a year and a half uh, old, uh, which is Podemos, which is a radical leftist uh, party. And the other one who has been only in Catalonia for a number of years, defending Catalonia as uh, part of, of uh, Spain and now has spread all over the Spanish geography, but only a, a year ago, so it's also very recent, but it's getting a lot of votes, both from the Popular Party and from the Socialists, and becoming more and more uh, a, a, a player uh, in, uh, in political Spain. So we have the two old big parties and these two modern parties that uh, have uh, built the, the popularity criticizing the big parties and making, making them look as uh, the responsible for corruptions and other scandals in economic life. How big these two parties could be after the vote, uh, we don't know. Most of people estimate that while the two big parties would have over 100 uh, seats in the parliament, the parliament has 350 seats, so you need a majority of 176 uh, to govern. The two big parties will get something between 100 and 130 each. The two new parties will get something between 30 and 50 uh, seats each of them. So all kinds of combinations are possible and as I said today is uh, too early uh, to, to explain what, uh, what could happen. Uh, my, my wish my wish and also my opinion because I'm, I'm optimistic and, and I, sometimes I have the tendency to think uh, that uh, what I wish is what will happen. Uh, it, it doesn't happen very often but uh, sometimes happens. My, my wish would be a coalition of the two big parties. A coalition between the center right and the center left to be able to agree on some basic issues that the country has to, to deal with. One of them is the Catalonia issue, but others are these uh, uh, reinforcements or reforms that have to be made in different aspects. And some of these, as big national issues, require the consensus of the two big parties. That would be one possibility. It's not. Uh, what the analysts uh, think that will happen. Very much uh, is considered that the antagonism between the two big parties has gone so far that it's almost impossible to put them together. But uh, I think it would be the, the best thing uh, for Spain. And in terms of the, of the image, uh, that is the area I take care of. I think uh, that would reinforce uh, uh, the image uh, of uh, Spain uh, putting together the, the big parties and, and, and trying to keep uh, doing the reforms and things which are still needed. And that's why uh, I would like something like that. But uh, I don't think it's uh, at this moment what uh, most of uh, analysts uh, think. So this is a personal, a personal opinion. And, and you should take uh, uh, like, like this. In any case, um, I, am, I want to, to thank you for, for being here and, and I'm uh, 
willing to to comment uh, with you and to learn also from uh, the Irish uh, experience and and if you agree we can move into a dialogue thank you very much